Welcome to Kemar Church Online, everybody. We're so happy to have you here with us and joining us online. Um, I know with the virus, um, many of us, we can't get out. We're ordered not to get out and congregate. And this is a great alternative that we have to um, do church together this way. So um, as we, as you gather in around the TV or your computer or whatever it is that you're around this morning watching church, I just ask that uh, you don't forget that the church is still up and running and trying to deliver this message. The office is going to be open all week. And um, don't forget that you can still mail in your tithe and you can still give online. And uh, we're just so happy that you're able to come and we can do church this way. We are so blessed in this country to be able to do that. And um, I'm so thankful that you're here this morning with us. Uh, remember that we do not have any Wednesday night activities this week. And we will know by later this week on Thursday if uh, what's going on this weekend as far as church meeting on Sunday. Uh, so stay tuned. Keep track of the, um, the web page and our Facebook sites. And we will keep you up to date as we know uh, what's going on from time to time with the district letting us know what we can and cannot do. All right. So as we get ready, we're going to start with a few songs from our worship band. Just the 
together this morning. We recognize that you are in control, that you are the king, you are the king forever. And we want to worship you, we want to honor you, we want to be faithful. And as we uh, lift our voices and lift our prayers to you in whatever setting we're in today, we ask that you would be honored in everything that we say and that we do and in the way that we live our lives in these coming days. And we ask your blessing on our worship today.
while we pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather around um, everywhere here, everybody that's listening, um, everybody that is, is watching, I pray that each one of us would um, find the ability to get quiet before you. Um, even though they may be at home, even though there may be distractions around, I pray that they would just stop what they're doing and they would just listen to what it is that you want to say to our hearts. I pray that you would calm the fear and anxiety that's there and you would speak truth into our lives. Um, Father, we know you've said where two or three are gathered, that you will be there. And so, Father, we, we are here and we're there and we're praying and we're hearing your name. And we're longing to hear from your voice. And we're longing for our lives to be changed. And we ask in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody out there said, Amen. Amen. Um, so, have you ever gotten something fundamentally wrong? Um, like in sports, you can't teach somebody um, how, in basketball, how to um, make a layup if they haven't learned the fundamentals of how to dribble. Uh, you can't teach them how to do a fast break if they haven't learned the fundamentals to dribble. Um, if they aren't in shape in any sports, they aren't going to be able to execute anything. Fundamentals in sports are very important. It's the first thing you work on during practice. It's the first thing you work on as a team. Uh, there's other things, too, as well, other teams, that if they get things fundamentally wrong, it won't work out, won't work out right. A fundamental of any kind of team is what is the goal. So for basketball, the goal is to get the ball in the hole more times than your team does and stop them from doing it. On a team that's trying to make money, the goal could be to make money. Um, for as a church, our goal is to reach people for Jesus Christ, teach people about Jesus Christ. But if people don't know what the goal is, then things can become fundamentally wrong. We don't know what we should do. And when teams don't know what they should do, they can't function on a, a basic level. As individuals, we get things fundamentally wrong as well. Um, if you don't know, let's say, a, a fundamental question to ask yourself is, is, who am I? If you don't know who you are, then not only can you not help yourself, you can't help other people. Uh, a mom or a dad or a, a husband or a wife that struggles with who they are in Christ won't be truly effective as they try to serve other people for Christ. It's important that we get things on a fundamental level right. Spiritually, when it comes to belief as a people, as a church, as individuals, we can often get fundamentally confused. Belief is not about what you have done, but about what Christ has done and what Christ is doing. Belief is not something that we just say with our mouth and hold apart in our heart. Belief is not performance-based, but it does affect the way we perform. So if you learn the fundamentals of basketball and you learn how to dribble, if you dri learn to dribble well, it'll affect every part of the sport. If you have a team that you're leading uh, at work or whatever and you function together as well and you know what your goal is, that'll affect everything because everybody will be working towards that common goal. If you know who you are as a person, that means you're going to be a confident person. That means you're going to lead your family well. You're going to lead your marriage well because you're confident you know who you are in Christ. And if we know what our belief is, that we believe in Jesus Christ, then that will affect everything that we do. Because when it comes to belief, it's not what you think. It's not something we say, it's something that we are. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter one, uh, 21, Matthew chapter 28, 21, verses 28 through 32. Now this is where Jesus is telling a story. He says this, What do you think? There was a man who had two sons, he went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and he went. And the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And he answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what the father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. Even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe in him. 
So here's the deal. Jesus is talking to some religious leaders, and they're kind of putting him down and, and, and questioning Jesus. And he's, in this very small story, putting them in their place. And let's put it out there that neither one of these sons that Jesus talks about in the story would get Son of the Year award. Both are imperfect. Neither of them showed respect. The first son uh, didn't even say, yes, sir. He just said, I'm not going to do it. And the second son said, yes, sir, disrespected his father in action. Okay. Um, if you know the Bible narrative here, though, you know that Jesus is saying that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are represented by the first son, who is disrespectful at first, but then does what the father asks. The religious leaders are represented by the second son, who says the right thing, but does the wrong thing. Jesus is pointing out a fundamental problem with the belief of these so-called religious people. They have it wrong on the basic level. He's also pointing out that a confession of belief is made genuine by a life that's lived by it. So here's our truth. The truth is, when it comes to belief, our promise is often better than our practice. When it comes to belief, our promise is often better than our practice. Promises can never take the place of performance. We're not performance-based, but belief does affect the performance. If you learn how to dribble right, it's going to affect how you play the game. If you're in shape, that's going to affect the way you play the game. If you're in unison, that's going to affect the way you play the game. If you know who you are as a person, that's going to affect the way that you live your life. And so for us to say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and that belief doesn't affect who we are, that is false belief. William Barclay puts it like this, Fine words are never a substitute for fine deeds. James 2, 17 says this, You see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it's produced good deeds, it's dead and it's useless. So, you can't say you love your family and not be loving to your family. It doesn't work that way. You can't say you're a hard worker and hardly work. You can't say you believe in God and not follow God. Belief without the follow is false. You have to walk in the Father's footsteps or you don't believe. Yes, the Bible is very clear that the, we who believe in Jesus Christ will be saved, but belief equals faith. Follow. Just as if you love somebody, you will be kind to them. You will be gentle to them. You'll be loving to them. If you believe in something, you follow it. That's just the way it works. So here's the situation. The fruit we bear shows the God that we believe in. The fruit we bear shows the God we believe in. Belief isn't just spoken. It's carried out. It's lived out. And it shows up in every day. Belief is produced or it's false. We are going through, as a nation, a difficult time, maybe even a scary time. Right now, though, as Christians, God needs our faith to show through. Our belief in God, who can overcome, needs to be evident to those around us. When they see us without hope, with hope, without overwhelming fear, they will wonder what's the source of it, and then they want us to tell us about Jesus. Uh, James, John Wesley tells a story of he was on the ship uh, going to America when he was a young man. They, he got this uh, opportunity to witness to the Native Americans, uh, and which was called at that time the New World. And so on the way, the ship was almost shipwrecked. And there was a great storm that happened, and John Wesley was caught up in it. And as it happened, you know, he was a believer, but he was scared for his life and afraid to die. And there was a group of people that were gathered around, and they were praying, and they seemed to be completely unaffected. And John later on investigated why that was. And he, they basically told him that they knew where they were going to go when they died. They were completely sure of it. Whereas John Wesley lived a kind of faith that he felt like if he did the wrong thing, he could go to hell at any moment. But these people believed and their faith was sure and that they were going to go in heaven. They understood that our God is loving. And so with everything we got going on and everything that's happening, we need to show that belief that this world isn't our home. And if things work out here, that's great. And if they don't, that we know we have a home waiting for us. But if we fret, if we worry, what does that say about our God? What does that say about our belief? If our God isn't making changes in our life, in our every day, then God is not having any part in us in any way. Our perspective has to change. Our God makes us new. He changes our lives, our hope, our attitude, and our actions. And let's be clear, okay? Belief is not a remodel. It's not a remodel, it's a rebirth. When it comes to belief, it's not a remodel, 
It's a rebirth. You can't believe and not change. It's just that simple. Confession of tongue is followed by the actions of our life. So in our scripture today, the religious professed to follow. Society looked up to them as the standard. When God sent a messenger in John the Baptist, who Jesus is talking about here, to speak to them, they rejected that messenger, and therefore the message. Jesus was born in the right place at the right time. He did things that no other man can do, and yet they rejected him. And if you look at the signs, on hindsight, we know that everything pointed to Jesus being the Messiah. But Jesus wasn't what they expected. Jesus didn't do what they wanted, because John the Baptist, who Jesus refers to here, what he spoke required change. If the religious wanted to follow, they would have to repent and truly repent, and that would require a mission of guilt. They stopped, as religious people, being an instrument of God's forgiveness and instead tried to be an instrument of God's so-called judgment. They used their position to abuse their power. They stole from God and from people. They persecuted the innocent, all in God's name, but for their own benefit. They hid behind their position to do evil that they had in their heart. They were broken on a fundamental level. The fundamentals was messed up, actually, from the start. They had no belief. For them to be used by God, to be ministered to His people, they had to talk to God. And they didn't just talk, not talk to God, they ignored God. Just like that second son, they said the right things, and they followed the law in public. And the idea of the law, though, was to draw Jews close to God. They used it to hold people away from God. They didn't need to, a remodel, they needed a rebirth, a fresh start. The sinful, those in society who they, people look down upon, like the first son, they started by rejecting God. They lived their life their own way. But when their rejection was met with an invitation to God through John, they embraced that second chance. So here's the steps that we need to take in this. When the basics are wrong, it's time to get back to the basics. There used to be a Christian song out there. We need to get back to the basics of life. I remember, my, I think it was my, somebody in my household used to sing it. But the idea was very simple. As sometimes when things are wrong, you get down to basics. And I remember when I used to play basketball, and um, we would miss something simple like a free throw shot. The next, bet, the next uh, practice, that's all we did. Or if our passes were bad, the next practice, that's all we did. Because my coach understood that you had to get the fundamentals right before you could move on to the advanced. And in your faith, if your fundamentals are wrong, then your belief is messed up. So a fundamental of faith is talking to God. If we don't talk to God, we can't hear from God, we can't follow God. So if you find you're not following God, you've got to ask yourself, am I talking to God? Am I communing with God? And you get back to that fundamentals and just start with prayer. If you're not reading God's Word and you find that you're not going where you need to go, you get back to basics and you read God's Word and He'll show you the follow. I talked about this last week. If you don't read God's Word, there's not a lot I can help you with because God communicates through His Word. When you're reading His Word, He communicates to you. And it's not just in the words that are spoken. He will speak new words to your heart. That's a fundamental level. A, a fundamental of basics is that we follow Christ so we're kind and loving to one another. If we're not kind to our world, what does that say about our God? If we're not kind on the basic level, a good practice of this is in our own family. If we're not kind to our own family, we're not going to be kind to our world. Unfortunately, a lot of times the people who are the meanest to are our own family. Our own husband, our own wife our own kids, they often get the worst of us when they should get the best of it. Because it's true. Your spouse, your kids, they can drive you the most crazy. But if you can hold it in there, if you can hold the line of belief right there, then when you go out in the world, it's going to be so much easier. You get back to the basics. Does your faith adjust to you? Or do you adjust to your faith? Does your belief change you? Or have you changed your belief based on your circumstance? Does your belief change your situation? Or does it change with your desires? Is faith something you say? Or is it something who you are at the basic, fundamental level? I am a child of God. And I live my faith out as God has taught me. Sometimes we have to get back to basics and ask ourselves, what do I need to do? to commune with God. I need to pray more, I need to read my Bible more, and God will affect every area of my life. When it comes to faith, it's not what you think. It's not something we say, it's something that we are. Heavenly Father, as He come before you with thankful hearts, I pray that you will speak this message to each one of us, that we understand that our belief must be carried out in every day. 
And Father, no more, it's so important right now in what we're facing that our belief shines through. There's going to be people that are out of work. There's going to be people that are be struggling financially. There's going to be people who are struggling with resources, Father. And that we would need to be the hands and feet of you, of Jesus, Father. So I would pray that you would help us to look for opportunities to serve. That we would look for opportunities to shine. And that our belief would show up in every way possible. For those people out here who are listening to this message right now where they are, I pray that, that you would help it affect their hearts and that it would affect their lives and that they would truly change as you've called them to. Whether we're the first brother or we're the second brother, Father, if we're met with that invitation, Father, I pray that we would accept it to change and believe. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in.